Euh, ah, oui. en, en, en particulier, quand je suis euh, arrivé, et, et j'ai ici essayé de développer de quoi utiliser euh, des, euh, des actuateurs euh, piézoélectriques. Hein, donc, je vous en voyez un ici. Okay. Euh, dans euh, l'idée de. Dans euh, l'idée de. Excusez-moi, ça m'a manqué. Dans l'idée de positionner précisément des cellules. Bon, arrêtez si je dis des bêtises. Hein. Donc il y a, il y a deux, deux applications. Soit venir positionner des cellules, euh, des cellules vivantes au micro près, soit venir les stimuler en, euh, en appuyant dessus régulièrement. Bien, je ne sais pas si vous comprenez le français. Oui, oui. D'accord, ok. Euh, il se trouve que euh, les gens ici ont identifié deux types de piézoélectriques. Il y a celui-là qui s'appelle le piezo stack, d'accord, euh, qui euh, se commande entre euh, se commande avec une haute tension. Les piézos se commandent en haute tension. Donc entre en appliquant une tension dessus d'entre 0 et 150 volts on le fait se déplacer euh, de 0 à 50 microns. D'accord ce, euh, ce qui peut se voir avec une, une, bonne, euh, euh, une bonne loupe ou un microscope. Et ça ne se voit pas à l'œil nu. L'autre euh, type est de forme cylindrique et demande à ce qu'on lui applique... Euh, euh, deux tensions simultanément, une positive et une négative. Il a, euh, il a une forme cylindrique et euh, se déforme, se déforme euh, dans un sens ou dans un autre. Okay. Voilà. Donc, euh, ce que voulaient faire les gens ici, c'était avoir l'électronique qui puisse euh, commander ces euh, piézos et... Euh, et qu'on puisse venir avec un signal d'entrée qui peut être généré par soit, soit un générateur de fonction comme celui-là, ouais. soit une petite carte qui est branchée sur un PC. Donc on puisse venir en venant dans une boîte comme celle-là avec un signal d'entrée sortir directement de la haute tension euh, sur un piézo. Et ça avec une solution euh, pas très chère parce que euh, actuellement au laboratoire de biologie qui utilise des piézo drivers, euh, le, le prix est de, euh, je sais pas, de, autour de 10 000 dollars pour un chose d'acheter. Pour un c'est pas 15 000 pour un max. On en trouve à 2500. Ok. Ça varie entre 2500 pour un axe, 15 000 pour les plus luxueux. Et quand on regarde en fait l'électronique dont on a besoin pour réaliser la fonction, on va voir qu'on est souvent autour de 200 dollars d'électronique. Après, le piézo lui-même, peut-être vous avez une idée là, pour, pour celui-là. 600 pour qu'on ait plusieurs piézos pour un couvert de piézos ou un tas de parts. Pour le cylinder, c'est 300 et le stack est 250. C'est le high price. Donc, le stack, j'ai trouvé pour. 116 pour 500. Oui, 113. 168 dollars if we buy 5. Yeah, 168 dollars if we buy 4. Yeah, 4. And the other one is 148, the stack. The, the 2 or the stack? I just placed the orders this morning. Uh, but it's either way. Anyway. Either way, it's 150 dollars each, let's say. 300 dollars for both. So, uh, no. No. So, for a solution of uh, two axes, on est autour de 300 dollars de pieds de dos, 200 dollars d'électronique, ça fait 500 dollars. Donc en vendant à 1500 dollars, il y a déjà une bonne marge. 
Combien pour les trucs 200 200. On va voir comment. Ok. Et ça inclut le labor ou juste les parts Parts. Parts. Oui, c'est seulement les parts. Et l'électronique est avec le optimisé. C'est cool, right? Oui, parce que si nous intégrons le EK61, le dev board directement, comme like exactement dans cette box, c'est going to be uh, an extra 200 dollars. So oh, yeah. yeah. It's going to be 400 in yeah. And do we know if uh, more expensive uh, piezo crystals are more precise or do we So I'm working the piezo stacks from China. Uh, it's half the price. And we have the ones from uh, Stevic, so we can control. OK, we have to find a way to control with some uh, Transducers that we have to see their frequency profile, if they heat, if they generate more heat, if they draw more pop. Yeah, we'll, we'll cover this after. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this this uh, document is more a technical document to uh, uh, to allow uh, Jonathan and Ronan. To uh, continue development on the board. But I will skip through most of the, the slides uh, just to, uh, to bring you. Uh, yeah, methods are relevant for market. Especially, uh, especially the price of the components, the view of, view of material. Uh, So actually, uh, the piezo driver function is mainly done by one chip only, which which is called a piezo driver amplifier, which is sold as with this name. Uh, so I, that's why it's, uh, it's supposed to be very simple to uh, to build a piezo driver car because uh, yeah. Components already made for this, and at the center of the of the board there is this part called the PA79, which is a, a dual uh, a dual uh, amplifier. Dual means that um, with one of these chips you can drive either two stacks or One silent, cylinder piezo. One cylinder piezo requires two outputs. Uh, actually, the provider of this uh, AO has this version, which is a costly version, and uh, this is the one that costs around uh, 240. Yeah, just and, the and the cheap one, which Is uh, certainly sufficient for our, our use because the uh, of 40 and so and So we, we use the luxury version uh, for the moment, but there's no uh, reason why uh, the cheap version will work in our application. I mean, the low cost or the cheap one? Oh, that's. Say to me, <laughs> low cost, low cost. Okay. Um, Cheap quality. Mm. Just uh, well, the, the works done around, around that was mainly uh, to check the it uh, should work in simulation, then make a breadboard, and then make a PCB board. Okay, and that's uh, uh, that was to check whether the choices of the, the components were right. Uh, around around this kettle uh, driver amplifier, we need another costly uh, device, which is a uh, power supply. Okay, uh, each of these modules costs uh, 40 forty dollars, and and you need uh, you need uh, four oh, well, sorry, a minimum of uh, a minimum of two. In such a box, whatever the number of channels 
on the box, you need a minimum of two uh, power supply, one positive, one negative. Which means eight dollars of power supply. The more power supply, the more powerful is the supply. And um, the quicker you can drive uh, the piezo stack driver. Because the piezo stack, uh, the stack piezo, stack piezo, piezo stack, no, whatever. Good. This one, this one runs slowly, and if you want to uh, to uh, to make it quick, it drives a lot of energy. Okay. Um, so if you uh, if you are limited in number of uh, power supply each, then there are five watts. You are limited in speed with this uh, piezo stack. And uh, 10 hertz max in, in speed, which which means you, you go uh, 10 times back and forth in a second. When, and uh, with this method, you won't, you won't go to uh, 1 kilohertz frequency. You can add some more power supply to develop maybe to double the speed, but you've got to change your, your method um, after a while. Um, then, adding more power supply, you will find another limitation, which is the bit dissipation of this uh, AO. Okay? So, uh, as it is, I think it can, uh, it can dissipate like uh, uh, 5 watts. And if you want to go further, you add a bit sink, okay, which is more costly. And if you want to go further, you add um, a fan above the heat sink. And, uh, and this way, you multiply uh, by four the heat dissipation of this thing, and so you can multiply the speed of the theater by, by four. But you want, again, multiply it by 100. Last, last limitation uh, for the speed of such a piezo is that all these nice power supplies that you have here get their power from the grid throughout uh, this. Uh, okay, throughout uh, this. Uh, what do you call this? Uh, a 12 volt DC power supply, which is limited in current. So uh, the one I've chosen is a 1 amp uh, power supply, which barely gives enough energy to uh, uh, to make two of these stack piezo work at 10 hertz. Okay. And uh, and again, um, one. If if you if you if you want to go into a higher speed, uh, you, you will have you will have to uh, to change uh, the principle of this uh, whole device, okay? Because of this, because of the uh, embedded power supply that are in here, and because of the heat sink uh, you need on the the AO, okay? Now saying that, if you if you are happy with your cylinder piezo, then there's no more speed limitation because they don't they don't take a significant energy to move. It's just that this has a linear response. Okay, this is easy to use uh, because uh, the motion is just proportional to uh, the voltage you apply. So you really know easily uh, what is the risk of the, uh, the piezo, whereas uh, the cylinder uh, don't, don't have a linear response, right? So you don't really master the motion. Uh, if you want to push a cell, not really know what you are doing unless you, you, you measure the whole thing on the workbench and you spend some time in knowing exactly the technology. Okay. I don't know if it's clear so far. Or so you mean <coughs> it must be calibrated? 
yeah, for the cylinder, uh, I guess it's, uh, yeah, can be at high speed, but it has to be calibrated. That's characterized. I'm sorry? Characterized. Characterized. Characterized, yes. And this then what the boundary? Do you, want, do you think it can drift? Well, it's not linear. They discovered at McGill that the piezo tube is not linear in its motion. But it, it is from the stack. There's a slight non-linearity, but it's, it's always there. So you can just compensate. Yeah, yeah, you can compensate that. Now, I mean, that's done in software. Yes. yes. Speaking of uh, calibration and characterization, um, we had a nice experiment on, on uh, Friday that uh, that is uh, promising uh, about calibration and characterization. Uh, we can uh, use the tape sensor that was the, that was also developed uh, here. Okay. And, I, and maybe you're not still familiar with uh, uh, this device. So that's uh, uh, optic fiber glued on a tape. Okay. And um, when it's glued on, on when it's glued on the piezo, uh, we are able to see the motion of the piezo uh, through this sensor. Okay. And as the response was uh, pretty linear, it gives you a, a good hope to be able to determine whether the piezo has stopped at uh, 20 micron or 30 micron, okay? And if it's still responding the way we, uh, we wait for it uh, in frequency, etc. So uh, what, what we need here is to, uh, to make um, a workbench to apply. Bench. But actually, I could integrate optical fibers right on the piezo mm -hmm. and just deliver it to that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but and then just have the fibers sticking out in case they want to have feedback. They can, if not. But we have to create mechanically the condition of a, a re repeatable experience, right? Yeah. Yeah. And and this promises to be uh, to be quite accurate. Okay, and. Um, Another point about this is that it, uh, it seems that uh, some uh, some customer not just by the the piezo driver but a closed loop piezo driver. Isn't that right? And there is value in the closed loop. Um, so one of the development of the product is to associate uh, a piezo with uh, a sensor and to give a feedback to uh, this box to precisely uh, control the motion of the piezo, especially for those who, who don't have a linear response. Okay. So you're going to close the piezo? That's yeah. what you're trying to say? Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. that's an, an optional, and as you have, as you, you, you've been working on, uh, on the cheap sensor, so you may, and you master the acquisition of data from uh, the sensor. It won't. It's not a too far away development for uh, the structure to go to this, and maybe had some uh, one hundred or two dollars to, uh, of uh, uh, material to um, the box, but maybe double the price. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you, you want to integrate that feedback straight into the design, and uh, yeah. that's that's, uh, that's that's that sounds like a natural option, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah we'll uh, <coughs> but so what we have for the moment is um, something that can drive. Either a two stack piezo or one cylinder piezo. It doesn't take too much. One so half of a cylinder piezo. One half of a cylinder piezo. Because and so, half yeah. it goes like this, and then you never set to go the other way. Okay. So maybe we, 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 we could speak about uh, axis? Yeah, one axis. Okay. So that's, that's good enough for one axis. One axis is one half of a cylinder piezo. 
and usually products have three axes for the most, uh, okay. So, which means we have to duplicate the uh, inputs and uh, outputs and such a, such a box, okay. So, this is good for one axe. <coughs> so, the cheap version is uh, 40 dollars. Okay. We put it three of them, that's a three axe product, okay. And two power supply at uh, minimum, okay. Three AO, two power supply, that's uh, five times uh, $40. Dollar. So that's $200 of uh, ICs on the board. And you have your free access product. Okay? On the same principle. They're totally independent. There's absolutely no synchronization between that. It's totally independent. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just a metric. Yeah, they are totally independent. So you can do circles. I mean, you can do them digitally, but not, not uh, the hardware, right? I'm sorry? You can you cannot do circles. You can do them digitally by sending digital commands. To yeah, circle. but there's no analogical uh, there's no, yes. uh, generation of uh, circular motion. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, we also clear with the features on my board. Yes, I, I'm just <coughs> the uh, the others. The what? The switching. I don't think you know yet. Okay, that's what. So, I'll just jump to Which slide is this? Here. That's a this, since this is our development board, right? We have jumpers everywhere. So you can either run them separately, like in parallel. Also, the jumpers, so we get parallel the car splice. You can take out these jumpers and run from another car splice, like let's say the bench. We have our load actually on there, a dummy load on the board. So you can just take a jumper and test the board. It simulates a piezo, right? Yes, this yeah. simulates a piezo on the board. Oh, so it's right there on the board, okay? Right on the board, yeah. And what else? So we have the option of power supplies, parallel or not, external, load on the board, and that's it. Well, I guess we also have jumpers in between the uh, inputs. Yeah. So you can bridge inputs or not. Okay. Now, as you can notice, you have two switches here. Okay. Uh, why so? One is to decide that this output is only the inverse function of the first one. And this is useful to drive uh, the cylinder, uh, cylinder cable and its two uh, inverse uh, signal. So you can, with this switch, you can either choose to drive two uh, independent sac piezo or one part, one axe of a cylinder. And we should label that which position is which. Yeah. For the moment, it's not connected because the signal processing part of the board is uh, still uh, in development. We come normally on the next uh, PCB that we will print. Okay. The other switch is here in case of would you prefer to use this junction uh, generator, which is uh, this is only for uh, support, but uh, the real size is this, uh, which is um, connected to um, a laptop with the USB. And as a consequence, this USB device only delivers positive uh, positive voltage, whereas you need for the cylinder driving positive and negative signal. So what we do is that uh, we assume that the user generates from here, and assuming that this card is this, okay, you want the card, he generates uh, the signal he wants, but with an offset of one volt. Okay, always positive. And this switch here is to subtract one volt with signal and to get the positive negative signal. Okay, that's an option. And this is done analogically 
inside the PCB board by the part which is uh, still in development but with low risk of it. Uh, and it was developed, developed so that uh, we, we only use one uh, 12 volt power supply, there's no major change. It's all, the rest is on the board with cheap components. So there's no uh, added price for this uh, feature. Uh, I think you had, uh, yeah, I think I described it all. Just um, so the the near future for this product is quite clear. He said that um, we still have on the market marketing side to choose where else to start with a, a three-axis product or only one axis. One axe. Um, if we take the risk or not to use a cheap AO, but not made the risk. Now, to go a bit further, um, we think that interesting development of the, this product would be to have a communi communicating boxes, which means uh, with the same. Um, laptop, we drive uh, we drive more than three axes, like three, six, nine, depending on uh, the number of box uh, customer wants to buy. And this implies that uh, the boxes are connected to one another and have a microcontroller inside. Okay. Which uh, which has a little bit of um, uh, of cost, not too much, but which implies more development and um, and it, it probably adds value to uh, to the product because you know, if a customer is happy with uh, the free apps, maybe he would like to uh, to buy some more axes for for the next year. And if all is compatible and uh, only needs one computer to write, to write them all, it's, uh, I think it's, uh, it's an added value. But it has, it has to be checked. And that's about it. Can you do that with individual axes as well? Yeah. Stack them? Like one, two, three. Yeah, whatever. Yeah? Yeah. And they are on the same USB port, right? It's serial. Well, it's like, well, we, we spoke about the uh, yeah, it's some kind of like communication protocol for the boxes. So you well, you want one microcontroller to talk to it, and then you can Well, you just have your controller or laptop or whatever it talks to all the boxes. So either like. And you're just going to buy another. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> either so through, uh, Each one has that, that's right. Yeah. You can use serial or even. Uh, 127 devices. Huh? 127 devices. That's the USB. That's the USB. So. Uh -oh. The idea of the microcontroller, I think, is uh, you, know, you download all you know, the requirements. Uh, from your computer to a microcontroller. Yeah, and, then and it has an on the cloud. There's no uh, buffer problem. There's no multitask uh, activity problem. Yeah, so it runs by itself. With the microcontroller, it's you have the USB in or whatever in, and it gets it out, and that's it. Yeah. Everything else is on the computer, software, or tablet. So the microcontroller chip is inside every one of the boxes? Yeah. Or is a standalone yeah, piece box. that. A fridge box? Yeah, because it comes on Okay. That's five bucks. So you have the same product, you know, but uh, you simply uh, sell one, or two, or three. Yeah, and, and, and all you need is to sell a code each time. Yeah, and it's the same PCB for all of them. We just not later on. Okay, yeah. right. Everything's um, all the same PCB. But the idea maybe is uh, to have something a bit more nice to to show than, than this yeah. as a. 
maybe a three axis product directly. Yeah. Even I say you just have a card that's sliding in, and depending on the axis they buy, it does not refer to it. That's uh, an option. So that's it. Do you have any idea of uh, the relevance of such a uh, So how do you feel about the readiness of the card? Let's say that we tested with a tube. Are we yet? confident to uh? Yeah, that we tested with a tube yet? Yeah. There's a tube, we try that. The tube oh, no, the number two can turn no. No, 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 like a tube, a cylinder. No. We've only done it with a stack. Okay, so yeah. we we've, we've assumed that the tube is faster. Because of all the physics says it should be. Yeah. Well, because we worked with it at this in space. Yeah, but also because the capacitance of the uh, oh. of the tube is a thousand times less. Okay. Or so it's just one power less power. A thousand nanometers. It's nano versus micro. Yeah. So that's it's an order of magnitude the lower capacitance. Okay. Because the problem is it's a capacitive device. Yeah. So the power that you put into it has to be burned by the drive yeah. chip, yeah. which is very unusual, I would say. Pure capacity. Uh -huh. so, so the composition of this is, this is a user of the piezo. Ivan. So Ivan, you can, you can talk about, are you comfortable with this? What are the problems that you see as a user? Mm -hmm. And then you have some people that, you know, are just new and hear that, so they have other inputs. Maybe you can say something from a project management perspective. Can I say something about the market? Um, uh, do we have any need uh, items for rotation? Micro rotations? Milli rad, micro rad rotations? We get the, the mosquito there with micro positioning, and we have to rotate it. Because I saw on the Chinese website it said uh, rotational stacks, or uh, rotational guesses. So, four axes. Do you have this in mind? Uh, for now, no? No? Yeah, there's no. But is there a need in the Not for biological, I, I can't think of a need for biological applications. Usually they have a needle that they want to drive somewhere. But if I take this in a picking place for cells, yes. when I pick up an embryo, do I want to rotate the embryo to match the oh, yes. That's what I'm thinking about. Like, uh, yes, there are so many things that people do. You yeah. know, so, uh, in market center. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know, but uh, I, don't, uh, I need to see, I need to check with pretend tools to go, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's mostly middle of the pipe. Right. So it's uh, a poking or a suction power of the pipe to uh, take something out of the cell and uh, uh, spray something inside. And it's but circular by nature, so it's irrelevant to rotation. Yeah, but maybe there are uh, tools that. Uh, they are not uh, symmetrical, and so rotation makes sense. I don't I need to So is it clear for the returning guys uh, what is the next step? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to understand? Yeah. What the next step is? Yeah. Uh, 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 replace a frame. Uh, uh, yeah, the change. change. Yeah. And change uh, KD charge. Yeah. The specification. Oh yeah, well, we never really agree because we yeah. we started from nowhere. We just made a car about an yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's right. 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 Yeah, the mention of the specification yeah. sheet. Now it requires a specification sheet that has to be right. Yeah. So and the one does a price because... My point here is characterization. We need to characterize our piezos. We have a, a characterization procedure that's semantic made for us. So we have to implement this. Basically it's just a, a LRC, a resistance inductance capacitance meter. Mm -hmm. And probe the pairs of different frequencies to figure out the capacitance. Okay. And, and, uh, and do we buy the equipment? And how much do we spend on it? Do we try and buy a cheap LCR or a expensive one? How important is it to have very accurate characterization of the pesos itself? I, I kind of work with that. I have a friend. He has a open. He, he works exactly with calculation of characterization of piezo. 
his doctorate and he had many options. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Even to, to define uh, the the supplier of this PSO, I think it can uh, help us because as many more than ten years buying this kind of of uh, PSO and he represents uh, some companies in China, I think. So so and he is he eighty is he in Brazil? Yeah, he's in Brazil. And is he his business is based out of Brazil mostly? Yeah. Would he want a partner in North America to do the same thing he does? Maybe. Maybe he can sell our right. Okay. Is he growing the crystals or he buys crystals? No, he buys crystals. He buys He buys characterizes and resells, like yeah. I was saying. And he built <laughs> the, the, the device to characterize his PSOs. Yeah. What a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. You buy just two. Is it too early to start the uh, IKEA's test, like running the KSO and selling for no. days? And uh, one thing that uh, Frederick brought up was going from the expensive chip, magic chip, to the cheaper version. I say uh, we wait until we sell. We bring money in on this project because. I started this, uh, this circuit in August or July of last year, and six months later I went crazy and I gave up. And then, thank, thanks to divine intervention, uh, Mr. Cantan arrived and <laughs> showed he's truly a master and finished the circuit off. So, uh, yeah. And there was no specifications to begin with, just were. I had blue sky objectives from a uh, client in McGill, which were unreasonable. 100 kilohertz and such. 100 kilohertz movement would take a thousand amps or something <laughs> to move it, so which is impossible. This is about characterization. Uh, this um, slow and capacity uh, device uh, just requires uh, the capacitor function of the multimeter to be correct. For what concern? Yeah. It's uh, not the motion, but it's uh, it's behind your as a low. Yeah, yeah, it's it's low. Yeah. But, but now when you turn to uh, the cylindrical case, so, uh, you, you need to measure precisely nanofarads, and then probably you need a arithmetic. Right. Okay. Because this is such a high capacitance. Yeah. Any device can do that. Yeah. Especially if we if you only want. Yeah, no but okay. all, all the people who did physics uh, or electronics, we all measured the frequency of the capacitor, like the impedance. That was a lot we did there, all of us, right? Measure the presence of this LRC circuit. Uh, yeah, if you want, if you want to charge it, more, more, the more, the more, the more, the more. Like we can make your, we can characterize it academically. Yeah. It's easy. You just send a signal and you count time constants and you know. But what what will be interesting maybe of characterizing it uh, on high frequency too is if you have several kits. Imagine now you're starting to uh, you're starting to sell your kettle driver with kettle and uh, you make trials of this and sometimes you drop a kettle and you don't really know it work now, Me measure a lot of frequencies, it's normal. And then if you have all you know all the range of frequency and you have the correct distance, you you, uh, you may be able to make the difference between the damaged device and the damaged part. So the frequency is sweet? It's not for the application itself, not for the stack case or case. But more for uh, mastering the quality of the, of the product. Yeah. For, for QA, you know, you want to do quality assurance. Quality. First uh, tester will be Philippe. Yeah. Or do you think? Philippe? Do you have any money for that? Ah, for you, tester? Well, he bought so Yeah, he bought, he bought uh, Actually, to be fair, uh, he's. Engagement paid for all our PSS yes, stuff. So okay. he should get it through. So he's a, he's a tester? He's already a tester by default from the yeah. engagement. 
Second, can we get some? Is it possible? Yeah, I already have some. Uh, yes, that uh, the one that he has, he has uh, any problems, and uh, and he refused to use one again. Uh, well, because it's slow, right? Yeah, it's slow, so many problems. But there's a new one that is faster and the return. Okay. It's still sitting in the office, and we want to install it. Um, maybe we, we could make uh, a list of things we want to learn about across customers. Uh, what connectors would they need? Okay, because we have. We, uh, we have used the coax connector to avoid the noise problem, but it's not convenient to use. Would, would they be happy uh, with that? Or do we have to try uh, you know, more floppy uh, connectors? These are the connectors for driving the piezo or for outputs? No, it's both. Yes. Well, both. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 We need to also to, uh, to, uh, to know if they need a function generator, if they have one, and what kind. Yeah. Um, so that's basic uh, basic questions we have to answer. Well, usually the uh, the function generator you would need it if you want to uh, characterize the user, right? Otherwise, you need a, a computer or a joystick, you know, Raspberry Pi to drive the piezo the way. Yeah. Well, uh, anyway, what what is what generates the signal? Whatever is signal that what what generates signal at the customer and do they need something in addition to what they already have? Oh, you're right. Actually, uh, if, uh, if we think about uh, other applications of the piezo, not necessarily positioning, but also stimulating, you know, stimulating muscles, like training muscles, stimulating muscles for let's say a certain period of time, you give them a certain uh, waveform. So for that, I, I suppose you need some function generator, which would be. Uh, but for that, we were planning to use the most complex options. No, the single like yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, the function generator, like this, the type of waveform you stimulate the muscle. Okay. Ah, well, we still the well, but simulation team is mean uh, mechanical. Mechanical, yeah. Uh, mm. Like he's saying, using it access to the format. What is the motion that we're giving you? The motion profile that the muscle requires. You, you sent me that number yeah, from. Uh, I sent it to a physics instrument. Right? Remember, I asked. I think we either like there are two types of motions. Uh, it doesn't matter what you do with uh, that particular sample. There are two, two I guess, two things you can do. It's switch, so it's a fast jump from one position to another and then back. So from point A to point B. Or from A B A, it's a fast jump like this, but almost no time delay. Or a slow motion, like uh, the speed can vary. So from A to B, we move slowly and then move back. So the only these things you can do. Square and triangle. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's it's a square or uh, yeah. like a perfection, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very easy. Uh, for your list of questions to ask, the list of questions to ask potential clients, would that be uh, asking what they use now and what they're happy with, or asking what they would like? Yeah. And could we also just look at our competitors and copy their connectors? Yeah, they, 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 we made the yeah, yeah, yeah. right end up with uh, a demand for noise, right? We discussed that, that uh, we assume that uh, people use more sophisticated uh, inputs than like just knobs on, on the box, but uh, so, some, some uh, people manipulate may like to have just knobs and eyes in the microscope, right? Oh, like a joystick, yeah. Let me uh, a joystick of. Yeah, no, that's it, yeah. Don't hand the uh, no, 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 is not the correct term. No, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm thinking of two of the piezo holder. Oh, yeah. What, what is, what kind of piezo holder do you need? Okay, so uh, this is Daniel, and he's actually online. He uh, made the 3D uh, design of the, uh, how the piezo ceramic assembled. Mm -hmm. And we use now a, a folder that. Uh, My suggestion for this this question of uh, how to assemble the tube with the stamp 
is coated in some kind of flexible material that it makes it look, look like one unit. So the client doesn't know what's inside. It's just a stack and cylinder hidden from them, and it just looks like a pen, right? And they know that this pen can bend or get longer or shorter. Yeah. And also, if you, if you look at the competitors, it's very compact and, and stiff. And I, I wonder if it's because it vibrates or due to the environmental vibrations, maybe you need that shape. Not too thin, because it, it's too thin, it will move like that. And, and remember that it's a piezo, so it's hundreds of newtons of force. So they can deform a rigid plastic. Because mm -hmm. it's very strong. Like this yeah. this one here is 100 newtons. We can put at 50 microns. Yeah, that's not uh, strong enough, because they all competitors make things in, in metal. And is the metal deforming? Uh, actually, they use this. It slides. It slides. Yeah. They use this high, hard plastic uh, that can be machined. What's the name of this plastic? Yeah, that's yeah. a black one. Yeah. They use rails. They use rails too? Uh, to guide yeah. the together as like paper. Yeah. I think uh, we, we, we've got to uh, we've got to go throughout uh, this unless we don't stand together. Yes. But maybe it's an overkill because uh, overkill. Yeah, uh, if right now our design has just the cylinder holding everything, and that cylinder is very fragile. Yeah, so that's the that's why I told my brother uh, to have. We need a shroud over it. The cylinder part uh, put into another cylinder and have just a bit of clay. So if you push it too much, it's going to hit the wall. Okay, it's going to bend it wrong but not break. And let's say it, it has enough space to do its full motion. Uh, yeah, that okay. makes sense. <laughs> so, so that way, because uh, people will definitely, you know, uh, hit it, pull it. Uh, has uh, anybody hit the piezo yet? It's a two-way device. So if you hit it, it's going to generate a thousand volts and blow up the box. Have we tried it yet? Yeah, no. The, the I, don't I don't I don't think yeah. I don't think we blow up uh, the box just well, we're we're just we have we have one section. But because I added the uh, uh, protection diodes in the output of uh, the amplifier. So my assumption is that they will dissipate the energy. So it's just which is not a problem. Yeah, but that's uh, another thing is that the cat so it's you say it's strong. Yeah, maybe uh, impressively uh, strong, but the pressure it will apply at max will be linked to its uh, to the power we send to it. It's a uh, we have a five watts breakdown uh, forward, mm -hmm. which means uh, probably um, which gives probably a maximum pressure for a given surface. That the ghetto can fly because it won't generate any uh, additional energy. So, well, because you hit it. Oh, if you hit it, I hit it. If you hit it, then that's right. Yeah. I was thinking of uh, using it without shock. Without oh, okay. Yeah. No, but let's say so it's 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 like the power that you were in. Yeah. yeah. But, but I'm never aware. Yeah, right. If you drop it, if, if I was involved, <laughs> Not worried about it. And by definition, uh, <laughs> very delicate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only person in the world who can work with the uh, single circuit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Just don't ask me to do it. I use the high sugar though. So is, is there are we have we closed the list of uh, questions we could answer by uh, the device. So how do you want to go about that? I mean, I mean, we we know how it should look like for uh, feeding. So I guess we're going to make the first of all that we're feeding this right way. Cool. Yeah, this box. Get our own feed. Uh, first of all, the assembly of the uh, piezos. Right. Uh, you know, the assembly of the piezo is coming. Yeah. So we're going to get our own feedback. You guys are going to use them and, and tell us how how it's uh, how everything works. Um, does Phil's card do the plus minus output? 
This, this is a National Instruments uh, DAC card, have a bipolar function generator. National Instruments card has... The one that Philip uses. That's right. He can send out negative voltages. That's right. So we don't need the input commissioning circuit. Because it has a USB, but it has a solar so time. Right, so we can use the box without the as is, right? Oh, perfect. So okay. it's ready to go, go to fill some more. Wow, OK. You just have to send it plus minus 600 millivolts max, right? Yeah, even plus. Uh, even uh, uh, 420. 420. OK. There's no, there, there's no, uh, it won't harm to go, uh, to go beyond. It's just that you won't get the linear response because the, the response, the voltage response will be planned at uh, 100 volts. Right. So instead of uh, you we send uh, like uh, sign and you will get uh, sign with flat. Uh, so the top and bottom. Plus minus 420. No. 420. Yeah. Is that what in your report? Oh. Yes. Is it? Uh, but the report is around the document, giving all the process to the final product. Uh, so for a customer, you might need to uh, to put the relevant information in three slides. Okay. What to do and what to do. Okay. Yes. Uh, I, I, may, I can do that just before leaving, right? Okay. I can subscribe my uh, no. Especially things that you should. <laughs> So I guess you have the insight, especially you think that you shouldn't do. What should what yeah. kill the case? Yeah. This is very important. This is uh, insight. You, you won't kill the case. The only thing is that you, you won't master the motion of the case or you won't respect growth. But the general device is robust. Okay, yeah. This is our game. That's to like the like the two more trials. So your game is 333? Yeah. So Frederick is leaving who will be in charge of this electronics? I think it's me. What? Roland? Me? Roland? Roland and... Well, we're both uh, in line here, but I guess. And Roland, <laughs> you, you want also to work on the tape sensor? So, so how do you uh, see that? You manage uh, the you do both? Yeah. But... Technically, it's only the first part and finish the product. Mm. So, I think I got to finish this project and go on the the tape sensor because there is a the command we don't for the flex sensor. We don't have them. The test bench too. So, I've time. Definitely, it could be even quite nice. I like suggested yeah. to expand and have the uh, feedback Look. dynamic. You know, I mean, you can see kind of good. Exactly. You, know? and, uh, you sure you want to stay? It's a little Go back. Yeah. Hey, my plan is on the boss. My plan is on the Thank you for playing us. Anthony, do you have any <laughs> comments? Oh, I think it's the most important thing. First is define what is it's there for application and build all the specification beyond this idea in this this choice because it's high dependent with the, what is it we choose. So, so do you think it would make sense to have a, a PCB that can be uh, configured depending on the client's PS or should we always tie them together, sell the driver with Yes, I think you should uh, sell to have a drive so, the as of well. And what different kits those will give? Different branches, different sensitivity yeah, different ranges. ranges. Yeah. It's very defined, yes. Yeah. One know. meter, one meter. No, 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 but I think it's defined. It's zero to eight to zero. Yes. Yeah. Micros. Micros, yeah. We can buy them uh, from 0 to 50, 0 to 30, 0 to 20. It's, it's uh, customizable. And especially if we have a relationship with the producer. Yes, exactly. So their capacity changes. Yeah. And yeah. the maximum voltage change. So the Chinese sell maximum voltage 150 volts and 200 volts. Yeah, but in here, in this. So this is general, this is always the same between 100 voltage, 200 voltage. 
Yeah. And this is just many pieces stacked together. Right. Yeah. Yes. So depending which manufacturer you get, you may have 100 or 200 disks that are stacked. Yeah. What is the lifetime of one stack of these? Like uh, the number of uh, you know, yeah, compressions? So that's where we're going to find it. Uh, so after a while, it will get tired and it will not move as much as it's closing. Well, it would be concerned about the plastic tips, right? That the jet though itself, never, I and mean, that, you know, there's a specialist that I've never heard of. But should we do a plan on the plastic tips? The plastic tips would be a lot of work. Yeah. 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 What in this purpose? I'm going to work in works. There might be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I did not get it. If you work in hertz, some hertz, uh, it would be a problem. Because if you work in kilohertz or megahertz, maybe in months or years, you can damage, damage them. Mm -hmm. But will the cases are not damaged. The damage is done in the glue and in the assemblage. Yeah. Not the of the has a this for our life. Yeah, like almost from the future, it's made of wax. Yeah, yeah. the problem is the right. 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 Just a yeah, long work team, they never break. Uh, yeah. Why is that like a Rolex? Excuse me, just a question. Do, do you have the budget to buy uh, the 1,500 1, uh, 1X uh, Keto that seems already on the market, like previous in general? Um, the cheapest one? The cheapest one is, two, is 25. Euros, 3k. Euros. It's 3k. One is three k. One x. But uh, <laughs> okay, in case you don't want to uh, to buy it, at least we study, we study the specification sheet and see if this complies well. You know, yeah. cheaper one. We bought one. Uh, the third last one, I think. Right. Yeah. Is it, is it, How much? Three x. Excuse me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> 18,000? 15,000? 15, 15,000? Because uh, they spent our money on their Gezo, they never used it for us. Okay, and then can you access it? It's dry. After all, it's your money. Yeah, it has torques uh, with the, with the uh, security screeners. But we don't have one. Well, they probably, I mean, it's I'm sure it's FPGA. It's a good for the warning. Yeah. It's a very yeah. specific one. It's closed loop, it knows exactly how to compensate yeah. for the load, for acceleration. I'm sure it's FPGA based. And, and the three axes are coupled, so you can do circles, you can do anything you want. So it's, it's a kind of time. Okay. Yeah, it's too bad you don't access to a. Uh, I, was, I was looking at the box of the script, uh, I really wanted to. I'll just, just at least take the specification sheet of the. Uh, yeah, we have all of us. Okay. And, and see if it complies the. Mm -hmm. this or not. Exactly. And for example, PI, the big guy, the big competitor, yeah. they center their own gazers in house. That's a value of They center it because it's, it's, it's patterns that are PI yeah. lasers or electron beams. They do it in house. They make their own. Uh, that's a uh, PI. Yeah. 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 It's Maybe that's where uh, your friend can be a good associate. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because if there is value in mastering exactly the. Do we know where the Piazza province of China is? Because everything is district. It's all by districts. So I can find out where <laughs> the Piazza is. <laughs> yes, yes. is. No, I can check the guys that I ordered from. Yeah, because uh, it's funny. It's, it's really it's all by district. You're looking for certain yeah. parts in a certain region. I think it's a city called Piazza. Piazza, yes. Now, I've seen some people are working on artificial muscles, and the driving voltage is around uh, you know, 100, 100 volts. Um, there's one uh, the nice, it's sort of flopping uh, thing. Um, so, this would make like, flexible flexible actuators, and then you can put multiple cameras on them, you know, and have a different 
Yeah, Kiesel Fan is a common application now. Yeah. Kiesel Fan is a, Kies, a very thin sheet of like polyamide coated with the Kiesel material, like our cylinder, and it just flaps. Mm -hmm. And it's meant as a fan to cool off electronics, but there's no rotation component, so it lasts a lot longer. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, what is the, uh, I mean, can we drive these kind of things with the box? I guess it's yeah, that's a very good point. point. Can we use this box to simulate muscles? Yeah, then yes. Oh, uh, sorry. We, now you must. Muscles are purely resistive load. Just only when uh, the load will activate the muscles. Okay. No, artificial muscles like polymerase. No, 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 no. Like, we take one channel, put it on the Z stack, the other channel into the back. Oh, there's a high current because you're working in a high. Uh, okay, there's a high current. Uh, but it's always a constant current. Constant current? No, you're a receiver. You have a constant current source. No. Okay, we how much effort can we get out of this? Uh, well, it's... Um, On a resistive uh, load. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, let me think. It's the same oh, so as... It becomes the assessment of row. First of all. And second, second of all, it's... Um, We have 30, 30, 30 yeah. uh, should be around 5 watts for 142 at the box. He says 90 volts per second per microfarad of load. Yeah. And this is like a 1 1 load. Uh, the, so that's uh, 30 volts. Huh? That's equal to per second for the three uh, microfarads. Yeah. And uh, so what current is that? Uh, D, 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 D. Yeah, I don't know. 
I guess I guess the simply the, the embedded uh, the embedded uh, power supply collapse. Yeah, there's a kernel on the chip itself. Yeah, yeah there's, there's a kernel on the There there's a current limit on the AO. But that's a sort of CDM uh, limit given by uh, the resistor current limit the resistor is uh, so you don't you don't get the tremendous grants at the articles. Uh, I think uh, I think it doesn't die. It doesn't die. Is that a test that we need to do? Maybe. Is that a tree good detection? So if someone shorts it, turns on a flag and says more deploy, you want to deploy. Because you know what happened this is? Sometimes it touches. Did you get a shock from the piezo? No. You know these little connectors that you plug on the piezo? Yeah. You know these little white connectors? I got a shock from the piezo. Yeah. Did you get a shock from the piezo? Never got a shock? Mm -hmm. When you get a shock, you're sent to destroy it, right? No. What's your uh, human body model? No, no, you are. You are like, well, no, no, you're not. What was the name of the piezo? It's a wet uh, 100 key, but you are already seven now. Why can't you connect with this person? Do you want to see why it's going up? Ah, you want to see why it's going up? Yeah, you can do it. 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 Yeah, the output, but we are we are not sure of it. And one way to test it would be to open the box and use um, use uh, you can bypass the embedded power supply and use an external power supply of the AO. Like you know the the external power supply with the current, so you can progressively uh, raise. Raise the voltage um, and see, uh, yeah, and see and if it grows more than uh, 30 milliamp or. Ah, okay. so short it and then raise the voltage slowly, slowly, and see how the current uh, goes. Yeah, yeah, but not testing it directly at 140 volts. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it should be able to, it should survive, but we don't know. So the best is uh, to open the notes and to, uh, to test it with, uh, at lower, lower voltage. And with limitation of current, and see what happens. Right? Yeah, I mean, some some people can just uh, uh, drop it in the water. Well, it's called bio. Right? It's bio lab, right? It's, it's yeah. a wet lab. It's, it's, it's bad. 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 Anyway, yeah, so <laughs> anyway, it's not connected directly to the grid. I mean, to this. So you're. Oh, you yeah, also have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's just I'm just saying that. Um, there's not much more risk in shorting this than we uh, short, this. shorting this. Do we do this all 12 volt uh, power? Our whole system? That way we avoid CSA approval since we're not grid connected? 12 volts? If we're not plugged into the wall, we don't do CSA. Yeah. If we put it on a big metal box, they'll save us on uh, FCC, which is still metal. I mean, there's. Because uh, if we don't plug it to the wall, yeah, we don't have to get CSA approval. You want to run into that and that way? If we run on batteries, I'm just saying. It may be worth it to the beginning, or if we want to sell something next week, we can't plug it to the wall. Yeah, we, we can need to prototype. Yeah. But what is the CSA approval? The CSA approval, it's the Canadian Standards Association. You look under your laptop and you see CSA. Ah. And then you also see FCC and then it will not we will receive the disruptive appearance and will not appear. Okay, uh, for for the moment for uh, the if you go go yeah. by your battery yeah. at the Canadian tire, you went wrong. Sir, that's that's not going to be not on camera. I'm not sure. I, I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Yeah. Like that. I actually <laughs> <know>. <laughs> 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 Exactly. Yeah. So, so I'm very sure. If you sell a box, oh, saying, or you can provide the power, 
which is just any normal subroutine. <laughs> 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 How many of those can we make? Uh, come on. Uh, and then What's your ability in manufacturing? I could probably make 10 a weekend, easily. Yeah, a weekend. Yeah. 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 Like a work party, mosquito work party. Yeah, but from a, a bag of Vijiki parts and copper boards to boxes of it. And if you have PCBs, printed? Yeah. Just and yeah. The longest thing is those boxes, making those holes in the boxes. That's the longest part of it. So it really takes so fast. Once we uh, design it properly, then it must become a manager. Yeah, uh, the guy I visited yesterday, he orders enough boxes from our hand, so they pre-punch them for him. So he makes the minimum order like a box, like a crate, uh, mm -hmm. maybe 100 boxes, and they'll pre-punch all the holes for him. Okay. Well, of course, you, uh, uh, you can do a manual. Yeah, I do a manual at home. Yeah, but I was going to look at some kind of looks. I don't know, I have a jig, I have a template, I have a drill press, I do it all. They all look pretty good. Yeah, after 10 minutes, we need uh, a. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking about this uh, compliance, which we are speaking about. Mm -hmm. For the moment, on board, the only uh, switching device that is uh, used is the record. And that's pre certified. That's pre certified. Yeah. So uh, it is hard to go from this point to a number certification, even that there's only a one switching device which is on this. Well, what we do is because he has capacitors, which he's going to be switching through, which is outside of his little box. So if we didn't do the layout properly or whatever, we may have a hot spot there. So we just take this, the section analyzer with the, with the wire. And we just scan it ourselves. Okay. And you can make the own proof and get the certification without too much uh, money. Yeah, and we, we do it first ourselves in yeah. house. And, and then we know it's going to pass, we send it to the KMT and they'll certify. Right. So it's not really it's expensive and then on the process? Uh, it's expensive. Like thousands of the, uh, Yeah, thousands of dollars. Yeah. And uh, three months or more. Five months of course. CSN? Yeah, 2000. Uh, and so, uh, light maps, or you need to. Every box has a sticker on it. No, but then uh, once you get the certification for this particular setup, mm -hmm. then uh, it's light time. Unless you no, no, the guy comes and he inspects and puts a sticker on The problem is that every time you change something inside? Yeah, that's why I change something. But also on a regular, regular level. level. Regularly, the rules are every year or what? Yeah, it's like. Uh, Every shipment that comes in, the guy has to come. Depending, because if we have a manufacturer here, it's different than if we have a manufacturer in China first, and we bring it here and then certify it and so on. Depends on how we do it. And do we want to be made in Canada? Or do we want to be made assembled in Canada? Because well, the taxation is. You say you can uh, start it. Yeah, if you're not made in Canada, probably you can. Yeah. yeah, probably. How many are we expecting to sell? Why are we talking about producing somewhere else? It should be in a container. If mm -hmm. We're only going to sell 10 and we'll If we fill a container with the other boxes, we right. you know, have a billion dollars in sales. <laughs> right, but <laughs> what is that special to do? No, no, no. Probably. Yeah, right, exactly. So, yeah, yeah, sure. do we right. even need to worry about. No. I mean, right, so we should worry about. We're not going to do it in our basements for now. Yeah, we were going to work. They were better, you know, you score them. By the time I'm afraid they're ready to go, then they're not working. Yeah, impressed with them. Anything else? Uh, I have a few questions about the cost. Um, in terms of hardware, are we pricing it specifically? So, um, some of the things when it comes to buying in terms of pricing is you look at cost, you know, the competitors, you look at even what uh, Frederick was saying that you can do a quite a comparison of their qualities and features and so forth. And that gives you at least the minimum baseline and the maximum baseline. And so somewhere in between, depending on what the qualities are and so forth. So that's an exercise that we will have to do, is to compare specific, and then compare which specific attributes are worth what. So what the specific advantages that we're providing with respect to the competitors, what would the people who are going to work pay for. Then there is uh, price sensitivity of the customer that you would also take into account before you actually price it. Uh, then there's added value, such as ethical productions. 
um, you know, the whole model and so forth. Uh, so I think there is certain added value that you can also include in the cluster. Don't have to do anything with all of them. Uh, the fourth criteria is also customization. Because we're customizing solutions for the, for the customers, that actually also includes added value to the customer. And the giving services for customization, automation, integration to other systems. Right, exactly. Uh, then there is a, a, a warranty monetization, so based on the level of warranty that we're able to provide, I think we're able to provide a product that is can yeah, that's 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 down, right? Right? down somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then, uh, that has you know three year warranty versus something else. Someone else is doing a year warranty, but there's additional value there. Then there's uh, service monetization, which is the customer service, uh, little touch points, uh, getting to you know your customers, etc. The sales cycles that actually also has an additional added value. So combining, and then the last one is also risk monetization and brand monetization. So essentially, if you have some and you're saying it's an ethical entity and it's high level quality and so forth, then you have an additional price that can be charged for brand. So those are the parameters you will have to consider at least before you decide what your price parameters are and where do you fit in with respect to you. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, before we have to do our press. Right. And, uh, I don't necessarily think that costs costs are also a function of the parameters of your price. Because, for example, if you're claiming that you're an ethical producer and you're in bringing things from China, well, then you don't have that price again. You don't have that. Uh, so that changes your cost, but if you can price it higher, then it might make sense to actually just produce a product. Why are you aware of that? I do not. I'm just saying that it, it may be questionable. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If you can say something and explain something and right. yeah. I mean, if you go to China yeah. and, and inspect it yourself and say, well, it's invented to China, this is the inner yeah. and that's fine. Yeah. But I'm saying that you will have to do take those steps before oh, yeah. before undertaking a claim. But before saying a uh, briefcase online in China, I'm going to go there myself and look and inspect. And that's fine. And then, and then afterwards you can claim it. And that's fine. A lot of it is also about perception of it. Right. That that's, that's an interesting question. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm jumping for you. The perception of a company that provides only customized solutions or just off the shelf plus customization or right. just off the shelf? Does it look better or worse if we're offering only customized solutions? Um, something that will depend on your Food. customers. I can't really yeah. answer that question. No, I'm asking you specifically. Yeah. Right. Do we say we customize everything? Well, how many are you expecting to sell? I mean, if you at are, one. at least one should be then customized, right? Like, how, what, it, what is it? Yeah, but that's the thing. If I want to sell that one unit, do I say, oh, I sell so many, would you like to buy, would you like to join the, the whole line of people? products, or do we say, we're so desperate for one client that we'll just do whatever you want? But it's neither of them. I mean, this is what who we are. Right? Yeah, yeah, that we have that price. Yeah. What do you want? You make it. Yeah. 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 But, but we tell them it's our first time. Yeah. Well, that's good. It's perfect. But I mean, you have to uh, prove your model. I mean, you already have like. Yeah, well, you, can, you can say he's out of the sky. Yes. You can say he's out of the sky. No, but you know, you do would ask for uh, trade more for customization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So say uh, the client complains that you know your device doesn't fit on my experimental set, and uh, it's either you say it's your problem, or you say okay, so uh, how much would you pay for uh, some percentage that we make it fit, but uh, it takes time and effort. Uh, I think one of the main advantages this model is uh, customer relationship. So you have to create those deeper customer relationship that a traditional industry cannot do. You have to engage them and saying, okay, well, why do you need this customer solutions? But in the future, if you have any more needs, well, we can even create an entire innovative mm -hmm. process for your particular request. Yeah. So you can't just tell them you have like a thousand products. But are we selling your kids up to get customers for other products? It's both. But they're not ready. But does it matter? This is right now. It doesn't matter. You're doing both, right? That's why the customer, the sales cycle is, is not just a typical sales cycle. It becomes a lot more deeper getting to know your customers, building relationships. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, exactly. Hi, why do you think it's going to happen? Uh, I think some of you want to fit. I think some people are going to put their nose in there and, and they're going to want more of it. I would have thought so, but Phil's lab is a little closet in the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to push it. Well, we can advertise it online. So, 
yeah. after you have five to ten clients, you have five to ten feedback, and then you can answer all the questions. Yeah. They care a lot about this and that. Well, yeah. What can be really an obstacle uh, on the way for the end user not to adopt it? Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, features, price. No, no, it's not, well, you already bought it. Okay, so you paid the price. You bring it in the lab and uh, then, okay, nice. You try to fit it to the place you wanted to, right? You were playing. Okay. So, and uh, it doesn't fit. Like, I don't know what about it. But how are we too short or something? Is that what you're saying? Or yeah, yeah. So, so it's, it's, uh, it's not stable. Uh, uh, that's the parameters, it's having the physical parameters, or the. Yeah, I'm talking about the. the I mean, Something the look and feel or the output? Yeah, the, uh, both. Well, what would cancel the deal? What would make an unhappy customer? Yeah, like it doesn't work. Yeah. I just, uh, I don't know, uh, I guess uh, we are working on being so once uh, we test it in the tool lab and we make it convenient for us, then I don't see why it wouldn't be convenient for someone else. Yeah, yeah that's what we have to do. Yeah, like once uh, it runs through all this uh, set of tests, mm -hmm. I think uh, unless something weird happens and uh, it's not very good in yeah. So now, yeah. right. just just in detail that maybe obvious uh, to uh, uh, Jonathan or Ronan, uh, about customization. Uh, for me, you can very well have the same board for any number of channels. The same box, and uh, the only thing that changed is the number of components you actually make, uh, put uh, to the to the board, and you charge it in relation with the ID value of the function, but not on um, on the cost of the components uh, Yeah, because so it's, it's not so much it's so much no effort into customizing it. It's just it's some, some, some some effort, but it's not. already there. Okay. You just okay. uh, yeah, you, you just you spend like you spend uh, half an hour uh, of uh, assembling in addition, maybe when you are well trained. Uh, but you add this uh, 40 40 dollar modules that makes the price uh, the cost a bit higher. Yeah, but you can but you are you keep same margin okay, because. What you, what you say is the function, right? Yeah, it depends on the utility. Yeah. Uh, I mean, how much. But that's a very, that's, I mean, it's a design. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of room, and you have room in this box, and yeah. you an idea. And so that's one X product. You can have a three X product in the same box, no problem. So that's a good point on what is the parameters of customization. Is it just the door, or is it the size, and the product itself, and the protection? Um, then the other point also, is um, uh, sort of a post, you know, what I was talking about, post-service initiative, right? Like, do you, you know, do you follow up with your customer? Do you find out exactly what is going on? And not just the first time customers, which would be probably the most obvious, but like a general sort of, you know, a policy. A policy, That's a policy right? That's a policy system that we have to right. put together. I mean, we don't have a part of organization. Right, right exactly. But mm -hmm. someone will have to follow up and be like, okay, how is it going? Can you want, you know, whatever, yeah. there'll be next projects yeah. that you're working on. Issue bars, have a community of people, it's you know, right. brainstorming about uh, uh, including them into the value network, right, through this through these initiatives and see if they, if they would want to join in and perhaps even do research with us or collaborate with us. So, so distributors. Yeah, yeah, do we partner up with distributors but also the other guys, like Team Metrics? Remember uh Miriam Toussaint came to visit us? She doesn't she sells some stuff, but she's more as a technical representative of companies. And they provide the app uh, sales service and the follow-ups. And like, I, I like we'll notice in, in Canada because we're not like the U.S. If I go to the U.S. site and I want to download a data sheet, they'll name it my email address, and then the guy from Toronto's calling me the next day, saying, "Oh, I saw you download a data sheet. What do you think? Or what, what are you doing? What's going on?" And that's a third part. But who's paying for that service? It's definitely the manufacturer. Right. The well, yeah, service. of course. So we can't afford it right now. No, but we can do it ourselves. Yeah, we can do it ourselves because we're small. Right. But is this something we want to develop and make that a division of Texas and Zorka that does follow up 
after sales service, or do we get big enough and then just outsource it? So I don't think we should outsource it. <laughs> I mean, we're not outsourcing. Because we're trying to make this work where we have this hidden agenda of turning everybody into an open value network. And it's not even. I mean, we're not traditional. <laughs> we're not a traditional organization. <laughs> that that changes. I mean, are we outsourcing production? Are we outsourcing uh, marketing? Are we outsourcing sales? The answer to all of those questions is no. But I mean, our outsourcing is value inflation. Like people don't want it, they find it because it's zero. And then if there is a need for it, and then people are going to see it, it would be the value equation would go higher, and they would get the rewards for it. Well, I mean, if the need presents itself faster, then we can uh, grow that function within the network, which is outsourced. Yeah. If, if the customer is that way, you know, they're not. I wish we could outsource all this stuff because we have need to outsource for swamp of money coming in, we have to buy service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Hopefully, we'll get to that very soon. Um, the second question I had was, would customers buy more than one of these products? Like, are we talking like a single product per user or per, per station? Per station? OK. Uh, what do you mean, like one axis is built by axis? No, but like, let's say motion hurts you. Oh, it does not one. But it's for both. Yes. It's for two hands. Two hands, yeah. So you need two hands for a hand, right? So, yeah. So at least two, right? Two minimum. Oh, okay, yeah, two minimum per station. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can get away with one, unless you do one kind of free. Yeah. I don't know. So two consumption, I would say one or two. But it typically nothing. Someone's not going to come to this office and have more of your PSO and go to the next door and set it up, do their experiment. And someone is like, where's my pizza? And they have to go back there to get it. I don't think it's going to travel around the building. Right. It's going to be per yeah. station. It depends on the price. Yeah, yeah. so if we're cheap enough, you don't have to. Or we get lower enough margins, it, it encourages to buy like 20 of them, and it's even better. Yes. Okay. I mean, the, the, the idea is to not necessarily be the cheapest in the market either, because it doesn't, no. it's not necessarily the price sensitivity that counts. Sure. I mean, there's a lot of other price factors. People would still buy the most and, expensive. And, and in like a opinion, you'll be surprised that here, there's right. a bit of reach. Right, so I, I don't think we should necessarily focus on being the cheapest. We should. Of course. I think uh, the the, uh, the main thing should be publish, which most the uh, most quality, right? The how can you yeah. help your client the most, yeah. right? And then I mean, you talk about and then, like Brazil and, and you know other markets like that, which you know for those entries markets, you have to enter at the low price, and then you have two price policy. But the Perhaps. thing we see is that like in robotics, like on inflation, is going up. So if and the perception also is that. The market is, is still small, but if you decrease the price, the market will increase faster. Same as in robotics, we discuss with a drop, and he has the same perception. So if you come with the same price as the others, even if you have more features than them, it won't work, like in my opinion, because the market will still wait for a cheaper price. But you must be you mustn't be perceived as cheap. Yes. You break your own. Right. Right. So there's a balance of it. We need to market as a disruptive technology that comes right. at the lower cost. Yeah. And exactly. So, it, you know. so both the technology itself, the customer service, and actually customization per se, not like the actual customer service product, but like producing solutions that are the, sort of provide the best value for the customer. And customization can be automated. You choose yourself the modules you want. Right. That will be just a feature of the website or whatever, else, depending on how you get to sell it, what it would be that sell it. Yes. No, uh, I just I remember I had experience uh, working with customized products from big companies like, for example, Forlabs. Uh, you choose a product online and uh, then you realize that it's too big for you. <laughs> or, uh, yeah, so for, for example, it's uh, you need a different shape. <laughs> And uh, you can always customize it, but it must, uh, but it costs much more. That's uh, right. And, uh, and if you call customer service, uh, not customer service, technical support, because you know that if you call any company, they have options like press one to like one to press two for customer support, press like one for sales, like five for uh, technical service. So you, they refer you to the technical guy. And you explain your problem, say, you know, like, I have something that uh, I want to stick your like, electron in, but it doesn't fit. Can you make me like a, of a wire which is thin? It says yes, and uh, 
please provide me your contact information. I will double click on my Susanna post and uh, normally they contact you back to me in person. Mm -hmm. The same particular uh, item with the same catalog number, but slightly more price. And it costs more than according to the uh, website price. Because it was not designed by models. Yeah, so it's not a, like a mass, a mass product for them. It's something that makes special for you. That's, uh, Right. I think it depends on how you market it, right? how you reach new customers. If you're reaching them in person, that's a lot different than if you're sort of sending them a flyer and then they go to the website. Well, and, uh, this, uh, you know, that does not make you feel uh, special. No, exactly. And that's the whole point. You have to have that sort of soft touches in the sales cycle when how we reach them, how we access them, how we interact with them, how we service them afterwards. You know, it's everything you it have. Customers have to feel they're part of the network, even if they're not there. Yeah, well, um, in their case, it's like uh, the, uh, the difference would be that uh, he does you a favor to uh, modify this uh, for you, not asking for too much, you know, to pay. Or uh, you call him, complain, and he says, "Okay, now you're gonna turn." Like uh, your pockets inside out. It's neither. And you know, and pay me. It's neither. It's a service we provide. It's not a favor. It's a transaction. You shouldn't feel like uh, that you're you're doing a favor by asking you. This is something you should be able to do. But there's a the trend or so we say in academic camp where these big companies they treat you as a personal customer because they customize your stuff and they send it. They send the stuff 80k to you because you're special, but it's way too much. And the profs now they know and they, they don't want that anymore. This sort of fake personal uh, customization of the machine. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it was it like, deal. Yeah. like deal. Like deal? Like deal? The company of computer. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, I think you got waters or uh, Agent, uh, they can do this stuff for you. They're special and we are high in science and we want to support you. We pay so much. Yeah. So, is it marketing is it like a priority right now for, for us as well? So, we had this collection at McGill. I, uh, I worked with Ivan at McGill and uh, this, this portfolio that comes from Brazil, highly aged students. Uh, almost always, uh, it's not just actually not my person. And then they go back and they work with the guy, the guy who was sending students to Tulsa passed away. Oh, yeah? Uh, recently, yeah. So it's a different person uh, who I contacted once. Uh, his name is Marco Vaz. He's from San Paulo, University of San Paulo. And, but uh, back then we didn't have any developer. So I disembarked from like, for, for, for a while and uh, I stopped uh, writing him. But uh, he's uh, always looking for something less expensive than because he they cannot afford it. And uh, through him, he said that he can contact like, other colleagues of his student projects. But uh, the Brazil, I know that uh, there are a lot of talented uh, research workers and a lot of good labs. And, uh, and it's a, I think it's a rising, new, rising scientific uh, big market. Well, how is it right here? Do you can say something about this? This is my opinion, because it's happened <laughs> somehow that uh, I know a lot of Brazilians in Montreal. I used to work for a Brazilian prop. His name is Wilson, right? Yeah. And uh, mm, so, yeah, so far, just, yeah, so far, uh, just I think that uh, Brazil is a it's a good uh, opportunity. Yeah, if you look at the barriers of uh, entering work in Brazil, and how would you like to uh, sell a product? Do you like by exporting it or having a partner there or manufacturing it there? Is that one of those heavy barriers for imports in Brazil? That, uh, I mean, yeah, they're, they're buyers. If he, the if there are competitors a competitor there, yeah. it's much much more. It protects, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like for computers. Yeah, yeah. 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 they are hard protected. Yeah, they are hard protected. Yeah. But and in, they're right. If all money comes from Google to this kind of research, so all the money they they need to know if they're the local company selling this product. If they're not they are allowed to, to buy a block, but uh, if there's some one in the country they can buy a block. So what about so, so what about the network strategy you have a half in right. the system? Yes, yes. Can you name uh, so, the big manufacturer of uh, uh, research tools in 
this in the I don't know. I can't. But most equipment are imported. Uh, exactly. That's what I'm most saying. Important. Uh, most it's important. Uh, it's the US and the uh, United States. Well, you were a problem, but. But there are people commonly uh, working in spectrophotometry. So all spectrophotometry, uh, simple spectrophotometry, are made in local. So they can buy us. How about the uh, uh, tactile sensors? Uh, the sensors that would require compact uh, point. I don't know this one. So time is running out. Time is out. So, uh, yeah, to get to this one. It's the last question, I guess. Um, would it be more expensive to produce it, you know, in Brazil than it would be in Canada, or vice versa? And if so, why? It would be more expensive to produce in Brazil than in Canada. Uh, Shipping. Maybe more expensive because we don't know anybody there. So we're going to ride the suckers. So we know. Uh, how would be Okay, so you can just explain it roughly. How difficult uh, that would be for you? to uh, create the network here and uh, you know ask people and uh, you know uh, become a distributor of uh, good so cheap yeah. it's not no, so so. this is very good <laughs> it doesn't work I